I have a few tricky questions. Stay with me if you are courageous enough to answer them and to answer them sincerely. The first of them is, has your blessing, your dream in life, become your God? Has that which you want so much in life become more important to you than God Himself? I know that the first answer, reactive answer of the majority is no. God is God. God is always first in my life, for sure. But let's think a little. When you get disappointed with God because He didn't grant you your blessing, the dream you asked for, that dream has become your God. When you are upset with God, you distance yourself from God, when you no longer want to pray, talk to God, go to church, you no longer want to invest in your relationship with God because you were upset, sad, since He didn't answer you on what you've asked for. So that what you asked for has already become your God. And the God you say, who is God, the true God, the Creator, the God of the Bible, in reality, you have only been treating Him as a means to an end. And here comes the second question. Has God become a means to an end for you to achieve a goal that you want so much? Do you seek God only because of His power to give you what you want? Yes, I've been seeing many making God just a means to an end. And one of the symptoms of this, one of the signs of this, is, as I just said, when the person doesn't receive what they asked from God because they went to God with so much anticipation and faith that they would receive what they wanted, and when they don't receive, they are disappointed with God. And they say, I don't accept this. And I've been seeing people exchanging God for an entity. They change religion, change church. Here is not working, I'm going elsewhere. If this does not give me what I want, I'm going elsewhere. So what they want the most is not God, but what God can give them, what God can grant them. Just like a person, who has a bad character, who only wants a relationship with someone else because the other person has something to offer. So they take advantage of the person, take everything from the person and they throw them away. Likewise, many are treating God. Then I say it again. Has God become a means to an end? Have you been seeking God only for His power to give you what you want? Answer to yourself. So we spoke about those who when they don't reach what they want, they get disappointed with God. And we have the opposite too. Some, when they reach what they want from God, Equally, they abandon him because they don't see in him any use until they need something again. They don't see in God any reason to keep seeking him, to keep serving him once they've achieved what they wanted. So if they acquired the blessing, now, goodbye, and at times not even a thank you so much. Like those nine lepers, do you remember? Jesus healed ten, and only one came back. And the other nine, not even to come back and say, Lord, thank you. You see that the majority done that. But that's why I say, many, many people treat God like this. If God doesn't give what they want, they are disappointed with Him. If He gives what they want, they don't see any use in Him. Many have been treating God like this.
In other words, our blessings and dreams can become our God or our golden calf. The golden calf was made at the foot of the Sinai when Moses took 40 days on the mountain and the people grew anxious, a people who remained for 400 years as slaves and they couldn't wait for 40 days, the anxious people to enter the promised land, not seeing any sign from Moses, they said to each other, let's make a golden calf, because the calf in Egypt was an animal that was adored, it was a symbol of fertility. Therefore, they've made a golden calf and saying, placing the golden calf on the altar, taking their golden rings, the gold that God has given them in Egypt, they made the calf, placed it on the altar, and they said, this is our God who took us out from Egypt, who will lead us into the promised land. In other words, they couldn't care less about the God of Moses. What they wanted was to enter the promised land, whether through the calf or Moses or Moses' God or a rat in the desert. They wanted to enter the promised land. Thus, many have been treating God and turn their blessings into gods and the majority, they don't realize that. The majority haven't noticed that their blessings and dreams have become their God. They don't realize that. But I am giving to you the sign if this is happening to you. As they say, there will be signs. There will be signs. If you've done out of your blessing, your dream, your God, there will be signs. Which signs? The signs are all your life goes around your dream. All your life goes around this blessing that you want so much or that you've received already and you want to enjoy it. The signs are this. God gave you the blessing and now you have no time for God only for the blessing. You got a job, your dream job. And now you're placing all your strength into your job. You want to grow your co-workers, the social media of the work. Everything is about the work, your trainings, the lessons, the money you earn the money you earn to enjoy it, all that you get out of this job for you to enjoy this blessing that God gave you, a job, and now God is in a corner, you have no time for Him anymore, you have no time to pray, to read the Bible, you have no time to think about what God wants from your life, if whether you are doing that to work is pleasing God or not, if whether you are going to church or not, if you are tired to go to church, none of that matters. What matters is your dream job. This has become your God. If you are there in love with a person, loving someone, and that person is somebody who whatever they say it is the law for you, if they say come back, you come back. If they say go, you go. Whatever they say is the law, but whatever God tells you, you question. What He tells you, you may accept it or not. It might be that you accept it or not. It's like it is optional. This person you fell in love with is your God. All that you want as a final objective for your life that becomes your God. When someone truly has God in their lives, He is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the purpose. He is the final word. It is His will that counts. Why? Because all that is for our protection, for our own good. Not that we are robbed of our will, but that we may be free from our desires that are against us and harms us. So notice this, because it might be that you are downcast, bitter, you are there cold in your faith, you have fallen into a trap 
of running after blessings and you forgot the blesser. You are in a deplorable spiritual situation because you made out of your dream your blessing, your God, and that blessing became a curse in your life. If that has happened to you, what you must do? Go back, repent, lower this dream to be under God, below God. Say to God, let your will be done. Do Jesus' prayer, Father, if possible, take away this cup, but let your will be done and not mine. Likewise, we must deal with our dreams. Lord, I want that so much, but it is not your will, let your will be done. That's how we must pray and deal with our blessings. Never allow them to occupy the first place in our lives in such a way that they will rob us of our energy that we are left with just crumbs to give it to God. Do that. Recover your communion with God and make out of Him the first and the last in your life. Never the middle, but the beginning, middle and end. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.